Every year, more than 12.1 million zebu cattle are transported across borders, not as boxed meat or chilled carcasses, but alive. These animals are moved by truck, by rail, and by sea, sometimes covering thousands of kilometers before reaching their final destination. Zebu are easily recognized by the hump on their shoulders and their long, drooping ears. Bred for heat tolerance and endurance, they are well suited to the harsh climates of the tropics. From open-air markets in Sudan to large-scale feedlots in Brazil, Zebu are raised with one purpose in mind – movement. Movement toward markets that demand live animals for slaughter, ceremony, or fattening. Transporting a living animal is a complex task. Unlike a container of grain or a pallet of fruit, a bull needs to eat, drink, breathe, and stand without injury. For days at a time, on board livestock vessels, a single shipment may include over 3,000 head, each consuming up to 30 liters of water and 15 kilograms of feed per day. Ventilation, waste removal, space allowances, and veterinary oversight are not optional. They are regulated, monitored, and essential to the operation. From rural holding pens to quarantine stations, from inland roads to coastal ports, Every step must be timed, inspected, and recorded. A missed vaccination or delayed border clearance can halt an entire convoy. This system operates quietly, but at enormous scale. Behind every animal is a trail of documents, feed calculations, and health. Checks, an infrastructure built to move life, not just product. And it begins long before the animals are loaded in regions where the selection of a single calf can set the entire process in motion. Zebu cattle, known scientifically as Bos indicus, are one of the most widely distributed livestock species on the planet. Originally domesticated in the Indus Valley thousands of years ago, these animals have followed trade routes, migration patterns, and colonial footprints across continents. Today, they dominate tropical cattle populations from West Africa to Northern Australia, Unlike European breeds that struggle in intense heat or scarce forage, zebu cattle have evolved to handle both. Their hump stores fat for energy during drought. Their loose skin and large ears help regulate body temperature. Their resistance to parasites and ability to thrive on low-protein grasses have made them essential in regions where survival depends more on endurance than speed of growth. In modern trade, their adaptability has become an economic asset. Countries like India, Brazil, Ethiopia, and Sudan have developed extensive breeding and trading systems centered on zebu, exporting live animals to meet growing demand in Egypt, Saudi Arabia, Indonesia, Vietnam, and several Gulf states. These importing countries have specific needs. In many cultures, slaughter is not outsourced to distant facilities. It is local, personal, and often ritualized. Animals are bought alive, inspected on the spot, and processed within hours. In Islamic markets, halal requirements often prohibit. Pre-slaughter. Stunning meaning animals must arrive alive and healthy to meet religious standards. Geography also shapes the flow. From Brazil, ships cross the Atlantic toward North Africa and the Middle East. From India, vessels move westward through the Arabian Sea. From Sudan and Somalia, Cattle are trucked to ports on the Red Sea. Each corridor has its own seasonal patterns, veterinary controls, and logistical constraints. The scale is not recent. As early as the 1970s, Gulf countries began building specialized vessels and feedlots to receive live cattle. Today, entire coastal industries are built around the arrival and processing of Zebu shipments. Some ports receive more than 100,000 head per year, with holding pens, auction yards, and veterinary stations operating in constant rotation. What began as regional trade has grown into a global system, rooted in tradition, shaped by climate, and powered by the biology of a slow-growing, heat-resistant breed that continues to wait. Move where markets demand. Before a zebu calf ever sees a port or hears the rumble of a transport truck, it must meet a narrow set of conditions biological, behavioral, and economic. Not every animal qualifies. 
In most exporting countries, selection begins months or even years in advance, during the breeding phase. In Brazil, large-scale ranches spanning thousands of hectares raise zebu specifically for export. Calves are weighed, tagged and entered into digital records from the moment they are weaned. Breeding focuses on traits like heat resistance, docility, parasite tolerance and frame size. Animals that reach a target weight of 250 to 500 kilograms within 18 to 24 months are considered suitable for long distance shipment. In countries like Ethiopia or India, the process is less mechanized but no less precise. Local traders walk through village herds, assessing conformation, horn shape, leg strength, and temperament with experienced eyes. A skittish or aggressive bull is often disqualified on the spot. One broken fence or one panicked animal inside a livestock ship can result in damage to equipment, or worse, to other animals. Once selected, the animals are brought into pre-export facilities for evaluation. This is where veterinary protocol takes over. A typical animal undergoes a minimum 21-day quarantine, during which it receives vaccinations for diseases like foot and mouth, brucellosis, and lumpy skin disease. Blood samples are drawn and recorded. In high-volume operations, handheld RFID scanners are used to track and verify each animal's medical status. Export certification is a regulated process. In India, government veterinarians must sign off on a complete health profile before an animal can leave the country. In Sudan, regional livestock boards coordinate with international buyers to ensure compliance with destination country requirements. Beyond health, uniformity matters. Buyers prefer cattle of similar size, weight, and condition. Shipments are often grouped accordingly to reduce stress and avoid injury during transport. In Brazilian feedlots, automated weighing platforms separate animals into pens by weight. Class. In African holding yards, the same is done by eye, guided by experience and long-standing trade relationships. What might appear as a simple animal selection is in fact the result of a layered system, balancing breed traits, health status, and international regulation. The animal standing on the loading ramp is not just a body in motion. It is a data point, a transaction, and a carefully prepared biological unit, conditioned to survive what comes next. Before export, zebu cattle undergo a conditioning phase, lasting up to 21 days. Their diet shifts from grass to high-energy pellets to match shipboard feed. Deworming, vaccinations, and hoof checks are performed, while horn tips may be trimmed to prevent injuries. In both high-tech and traditional, yards, handlers acclimate the animals to human movement, reducing stress. This phase ensures the cattle are biologically and behaviorally ready for long-distance transport. Zebu cattle often travel over 1,000 kilometers by truck to reach coastal ports. Vehicles are ventilated and fitted with non-slip floors, with stops every 12 hours for water. Handlers monitor stress and spacing during transit. In East Africa, herders may accompany convoys to manage animal behavior. Delays at borders pose risks, so routes are planned around rest points, traffic and temperature. The journey is long, but carefully managed at each stage. At the port, zebu cattle are guided onto ships via hydraulic ramps and curved chutes to reduce stress and prevent injury. Final health checks are performed, and animals are grouped by weight into pens with calculated space. Feed and water are provided immediately. Loading over 3,000 head can take up to 18 hours with crews monitoring behavior and ventilation. Once aboard, the animals leave solid ground for days of controlled maritime transport. At sea, zebu cattle spend 7 to 15 days in controlled conditions. Each consumes up to 30 liters of water and 15 kililiter of feed daily, supplied through automated systems. Ventilation prevents heat stress, while waste is managed per maritime law. Veterinarians monitor health, with mortality rates typically under 0.5%. Lighting and feeding schedules are adjusted to reduce stress. The voyage is continuous, with no margin for system failure. Upon docking, Cattle are unloaded in small groups using sloped ramps. 
port veterinarians inspect documentation and animal condition. Some shipments face up to 10 days of post-arrival. Quarantine. The process, lasting up to 12 hours, marks the transition from sea to land, where animals head to feedlots, markets, or abattoirs. Calm unloading signals effective care during transport. Once cleared, Zebu cattle are directed, based, on market demand. In Gulf states, most are slaughtered within 48 hours, often under halal protocols that require live, conscious animals and specific handling methods. Facilities are designed for high throughput, with strict hygiene and religious oversight. In Southeast Asia, many animals are routed to urban wholesale markets, especially during peak religious festivals. A healthy bull can fetch over $2,000 USD during Eid al-Adha, when demand for live sacrifice peaks. Some buyers opt for feedlot finishing. In Vietnam, Indonesia, and parts of the Middle East, imported cattle are fed for 60 to 90 days, gaining up to 150 kilograms before final sale. Feedlots near ports use local grains and crop residues, optimizing feed-to-weight ratios. Each route, from slaughter to resale, is shaped by cultural, economic, and logistical factors. But in all cases, the animal's value is highest when it arrives healthy, calm, and properly conditioned. Behind the global movement of Zebu cattle lies a layered blend of traditional practice and modern logistics. In Niger or Somalia, Herders still move cattle on foot for days, relying on memory and terrain knowledge. These skills remain vital for sourcing and early-stage selection. At the same time, exporters in Brazil and India use RFID tags, biometric records and export tracking platforms. A single shipment may be traced from pasture to port through digital dashboards used by shipping agents and veterinary authorities. Vessels are designed specifically for livestock, with adjustable ventilation, real-time temperature monitoring, and feed calculators that predict daily intake based on weight and weather. In Australia and the Gulf, some ports even use facial recognition to log animal entries. Despite the contrast in tools, the objective is the same. Deliver the animal alive, healthy, and compliant. Success depends on both experience and adaptation. Whether it's a trader estimating weight by eye or a technician adjusting humidity levels on deck, the movement of Zebu cattle is not just an industrial process. It's a system shaped by both inherited knowledge and calibrated control, one that must adapt daily to terrain, regulation, and the biology of an animal bred to endure. The trade in live Zebu cattle is one of the least visible yet most economically significant flows in global agriculture. Each year, more than 12.1 million head are exported alive, supporting a commercial chain that generates over $7 billion USD in trade value. But its importance extends far beyond numbers. For exporting countries such as Brazil, India, Sudan, and Ethiopia, the trade provides critical rural income and foreign currency. In Brazil, large ranches and feedlots create year-round employment, while logistics companies, veterinary inspectors, and port staff maintain a steady support network. In East Africa, it supports millions of smallholders who raise and trade cattle in systems that stretch back generations, now formalized through export channels. Importing countries benefit differently. In the Middle East, Southeast Asia, and parts of North Africa, live animal imports offer flexibility. Local slaughter means meat is always fresh. Religious customs, particularly halal requirements, favor animals that are slaughtered under specific conditions, often within hours of purchase. Without cold storage infrastructure, many countries prefer to import the animal rather than manage. Frozen distribution. The scale is immense. A single livestock vessel may carry over 3,000 head, consuming up to 90,000 liters of water and 45,000 kilograms of feed per day. Multiply that by dozens of ships operating across the Atlantic, Indian Ocean, and Red Sea, and the figures become staggering. Shipping costs alone are substantial. Moving one adult bull from Brazil to Egypt can cost between $280 and $350. USD, 
depending on distance, fuel prices, and port taxes. When scaled to thousands of animals per shipment, transport becomes a multi-million dollar operation, managed by specialized shipping firms operating under tight biosecurity and animal welfare regulations. Beyond economics, this trade shapes breeding programs, veterinary networks, and regional infrastructure. Some ports have been retrofitted entirely around live animal handling with quarantine zones, water pipelines, and shaded holding pens. In key markets, the arrival of live zebu aligns with major festivals, driving seasonal price surges and concentrated logistics activity. This isn't simply a trade in meat. It's a trade in living systems designed to arrive breathing, standing and valuable. A moving supply of protein shaped by both tradition and demand, moving across continents at a pace few ever see. At the heart of this global system is an animal shaped by climate, history, and endurance. Zebu cattle move not as abstract units of trade, but as living bodies, each requiring food, space, water, and oversight every step of the way. What makes the trade remarkable is not just its volume, but its precision. A voyage that begins in a highland pasture may end in an urban market thousands of kilometers away without the animal ever stepping into a cold chain. Every movement is calculated, the weight of feed per head, the angle of a loading ramp, the rate of air exchange on a ship deck.